Hi everyone, this is Zifan from Singularity Engineering. Today I'm going to show you how to perform antenna simulation with ANSYS HFSS. First, I'm going to do antenna matching on a printed circuit board. Next, I will perform antenna radiation problem simulation, and I will bring the printed circuit board into a GPS enclosure, next into a bigger environment which is inside a car. So let's get started. The software you see here is called the ANSYS Electronic Desktop. It includes all the ANSYS electromagnetic tools, which we goes from high frequency HFSS. We have RLCG extraction Q3D. We have system level simulation circuit designer, thermal analysis, ice pack, and low frequency mass well, etc. Now let's go ahead and insert our HFSS design. Now let's go ahead and import the design. Ansys HFSS allows you to import many different file formats, which includes step file, IGS file, DSF file, and ODP plus plus etc. And let's go ahead and insert the printed circuit board. Here we have our printed circuit board. And on the right bottom corner, you can see we have the traces that connect to the antenna. We also have the excitation port and two port for matching networks. The first thing we need to do here is assign the material. What I'm going to do here is I have a region. So this is the error box. I will right click, assign material. Ansys material library includes different material from many different vendors and manufacturers. You can find almost all the basic materials inside the library. If you are interested in some specific material, you can go ahead and add your own material. Now you just need to import the material property for your material. And for the error box, I will just do error. Okay. I also have the dielectric. For the dielectric, we will use standard material FR4. Okay, now for the rest of the material, I will use copper. And now let's go ahead and assign the excitation. We have the excitation port. We are going to set up two ports for the alarm element. Now, in order to extract the radiation pattern for the design, we will need to set the error box to radiation. We will need to set the error box to radiation boundary. Okay, 
On the left hand side here, we can see our project manager. So now we have the excitation and we have the boundaries. We are going to set up for analysis. Oh, before I do this, I will need to put the antenna onto the design. On the right hand side here, we have the component library and the antenna I'm going to use here is an encrypted model from Johansson Technology. It's a GPS antenna and before I place the antenna, I'm go going to create a coordinate system for that. And simply by drag and drop, I can imp import the antenna. Let's move it to the proper position. Okay, now we have the antenna ready. And next we are going to set up the analysis. Okay, we are going to do a frequency sweep from 1 gigahertz to 4 gigahertz. Okay, and now let's run a quick validation check before doing the simulation. Okay. Now we can go ahead and run the simulation. Okay, now the simulation is finished. And let's go ahead and check out some results. If we right click results, we plot a rectangular plot. We can check our S11. And we have our we have our S11 and this is not matched yet. And let's go ahead and check out our radiation patterns. Now we have this top plane radiation pattern and let's look at it with the design. Just right click so the so in the model windows and if we go back we have the radiation pattern here. We can even look at the 3D polar plot, right click results, create far field reports, and 3D polar plots. Use DB, new reports, and we have our 3D game plot. Let's look at it in the design. And if we go back, boom, we have our 3D polar plot for our antenna. And next thing we are going to do is we are going to give the circuit a matching network. If we go to project, insert circuit design. Okay. So circuit design is a tool that allows us to perform more uh, system level simulation. So here we can bring in our lump elements into the circuit. So let's first link up HFSS. Right click circuit and we add the sub circuit at HFSS link. Okay. And now we have our HFSS here. And let's go ahead and move the pin a little bit. So the individual reference ground reference port. And let me do the menu edit. Okay. There we go. And let's add a port to port one and the ground. Uh, double click on the port. Make sure it's a 50 ohm port and we are using a microwave port. Okay.
and we need to go ahead and give it some citations configure source make sure the frequency is the right frequency okay on the right hand side we have our shunt port and our series port so since I have the metric network already, I can go ahead and add the capacitors. Connect it and the other end I'm connecting it to the reference port. Okay. Okay, so let's add some analysis. We'll do a linear network. Looks like we already have the frequency 1 to 4 gigahertz. we we'll do step by 0 0.05 gigahertz per step. OK. And if I'm going to set the right values, I have 20, I have C1 shunt is 1.5 and I have this C2 which is 26 okay now let's run some simulation after the simulation is done let's check out some results here we have the S parameter and we also have the Smith chart. Both result looks good to me. Now let's go ahead and bring this two value back to HFSS. And I'm going to put the pretty circuit board inside GPS enclosure. First, let me disable this to overplot. And if you remember, we have the series and shunt port. Let's go ahead and delete those two. And instead of, instead of setting another port, I'm going to do a LAM RLC boundary. I'll give it a capacitor for series, which is 26 picofarad. And I um, also have 1.5 picofarad capacitance for the shunt. Okay. Now I have my LAM RLC boundary set up. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a GPS enclosure. If I go to draw, split the component library, browse. And if I go to chipped, okay. Oh, I have my GPS case. Okay. There we go. Let me move the PCB inside the case. There we go. And on the left hand side here, we can see we have our GPS case and we have the monitor as glass and we have the rest of the elements as plastic. So later I will have another video showing you how to create a 3D component. But now let's go ahead and run the simulation. Let's do a quick validation check.
everything looks good and we can now have run the simulation now the simulation is finished let's go ahead and check out some results if we look at the s parameters we can see the s parameter looks pretty good we can also check out the smith chart that's pretty good too and let's check out the radiation problems and now let's go ahead and plot this over our 3d design and here we can see how the radiation problems looks like with the gps case since our gps case is mainly made of plastic and glass there won't be a big impact to the radiation problem but what if we put the gps inside a car what do you expect to happen? And now let's do that. I'm going to head and disable this. And again, I'm going to import another 3D component, which is our car. So, okay. And let me go ahead and bring this to the proper position. Okay, now we have our GPS inside the car. Let's go ahead and set up for simulation. Since the GPS has a smaller scale than the car, so we are not going to use radiation pattern in this case. We are going to use hybrid region in this case for simulation. If we find the error box, a sun hybrid. We are going to use Phoebe re region in this case. Click OK. And let's go ahead and double click on setup. Go to hybrid. And we are going to minimize the ray density and minimize the number of bounces. And we are going to skip shooting and bouncing rays in this case click OK and let's go ahead and do a validation check okay looks like everything is good and now we can go ahead and run the simulation now we have our simulation finished here we have the radiation pattern of the GPS antenna inside the car as we can see the radiation pattern tends to scatter so this tells us that when the antenna is inside a car or surrounded by a big piece of metal, the antenna radiation problem tends to have a scattering performance. With simulation, we can run antenna simulation from a small scale such as PCB and we can bring it into an enclosure and even into a larger environment. At the end, I hope this video helps and if you have any questions or if you are interested in the simulation, please feel free to email me.